Blender 4.5 is the update we've been waiting for. While it has many small quality of life fixes, it also introduces game-changing new features that will revolutionize the way every 3D artist creates. The rollout of Vulkan has made Blender 18 times faster in some areas, modeling has gotten more performant and intuitive, and there are new nodes that make it trivial to combine complex objects while keeping perfect topology. So today we'll explore the groundbreaking new features added in Blender 4.5, how these changes are building towards 5.0, and everything you need to know to get the most out of this update. So there are three broad categories of changes in this update, and each is impactful in its own right. But we're gonna start with the features. This update was absolutely chalk full of new features, especially for modeling. One that's super handy is the newly improved grid fill operation. It essentially allows for localized retopology in one click. While you could grid fill loose edges in older versions, now it replaces ingons and tries with perfect quad topology if possible, which is a huge time saver. Now we don't need to use the knife tool and go in and manually connect edges. And while the new grid fill operation is great on its own, it also makes it easier to create manifold objects. If you aren't familiar with them, they're just objects that don't have any holes, loose geometry, and all the mesh normals point outwards. And in Blender 4.5, we have a new manifold boolean operation, which is great. It's as performant as the old fast option and as precise as exact, but it only works on manifold objects. So now it's easier to make manifold objects with the new grid fill operation, and they run way faster if you have booleans. And that brings us to the next feature set added in Blender 4.5, which is the new nodes. And to learn more about them, I interviewed Harry Blends, who does Blender's official node overview with each release. How is 4.5 going to be different? How much has been added in 4.5 that makes it, like you're saying, like so crazy? There's a substantial amount of new nodes. There's import nodes, which give us the ability to import stuff directly into a tree. There's mesh normals, which I think is going to be huge for modeling. It's really powerful. It's like magic, but scary magic, like actually scary. Grease Pencil gets yet more nodes, giving us yet more control. And there's a new camera info node. I used that one a lot in my last video to make 3D viewports that do neat little perspective tricks. So what's possible with this stuff? A lot. Okay, so there are a ton of new nodes, but there is one in particular that I am personally way more excited about than any of the other ones. And I think anyone who is really serious about modeling should really look into. And that is the mesh normal node. In Harry's overview, he demonstrated how easy it is to combine objects together, allowing them to merge. This is somewhat reminiscent of SDF modeling, but you have all the advantages of a mesh-based system, which is really powerful. This is probably the single feature that I'm most excited about exploring. I mean, in the past, smoothly combining different objects that they flow and merge together would be destructive. It would ruin their topology, but this is a simple, elegant solution. And it's also procedural. It's really exciting. Blender 4.5 also brings full support to point clouds. This is a huge step forward, especially with the increased prevalence of Gaussian splatting and other point cloud-based environment generation techniques. About five months ago, I tried Gaussian splatting for myself. I followed this tutorial by Default Cube, which was really great, but at the time, Blender really didn't have much support for importing splats. I ended up having to keep everything in PostShot, which is the program I used to create the splat. But now with the new point cloud objects, we are taking the first step towards a more complete integration, which is really exciting. And with all these new features being added in Blender 4.5 and 5.0 on the horizon, there has never been a better time to learn Blender, but that can be a very difficult task. There's a lot to learn, which is why I chose to partner with Skillshare for this video. The reason I wanted to partner with them is because there are some individually really great tutorials on YouTube, but you end up bouncing from random video to video, which means you waste a lot of time. With Skillshare, you get access to hundreds of classes made by industry professionals where every second is structured and each lesson is cohesive and builds on the last, which means you'll learn way faster. There are tons of classes that teach Blender, but I've always wanted to learn After Effects. So I've been going through this class by Jordi Vandebut. It's high quality and shows what I need to do without needless fluff. And even if you don't want to learn Blender, since Skillshare is the largest online learning platform, you can learn any creative skill. They have literally thousands of online classes that teach everything from film and illustration to productivity and journalism. But even if you only care about Blender, there are over 700 classes that span every skill level. 
The first 500 people to use my link in the description or scan the QR code will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So there's literally no risk. If it's not a good fit, you can cancel anytime. But now let's get back to the video. Now, not everyone is going to make use of the new grid fill or use Gaussian splatting and photogrammetry, which is why the next category is really exciting. Blender 4.5 brings a ton of speed improvements over the last version. Each on their own is impressive, but together, they mark one of the biggest performance boosts in its history. A major reason for this was the switch from OpenGL to Vulkan. If you aren't familiar, Blender has run with the OpenGL backend since its initial release, but it has a lot of limitations. One of the main reasons is that it was developed in the 90s and can't take full advantage of today's hardware, but Vulkan fixes this. It's a modern API that allows developers to have much more fine-grained control over program optimization, which has led to a speed increase of up to 18 and a half times in some areas. Now, don't expect that in every area, but the cold start is going to be faster. You'll have a more performant edit mode, especially on objects with a lot of geometry, and the viewport will be noticeably faster when you have a large scene. But 4.5 also added support for GPU subdivision when you're running Vulkan or Metal backend. So for objects with a high subdivision level with that large poly count, it's literally night and day. It's way faster. But performance boosts don't stop there. Sculpting on large meshes is way faster, especially if you're using small brushes. Because Blender now has a more efficient algorithm that only evaluates the area that's being sculpted instead of the entire mesh. And the EV wasn't forgotten in this update either. Texture loading is way faster, and with the new threaded optimizations, EV will have a noticeable improvement, even being twice as fast in some cases. But Blender 4.5 doesn't stop there. This update is seriously crazy. They also added some things that the community has asked for for a long time. First is one of these small things. Lights now have a color temperature control. Now, you could do this before if you made use of a black body node, but now it's more simple and it's way faster. And even though this individually isn't a big deal, these small quality of life changes add up. And the big one this update is and the compositor, which now supports texture nodes. This is something I've wanted for a long time. We have them in the other node editors, why not the compositor? But this is going to make a ton of different compositing tasks way easier. And outside of just the new nodes that were added, it's also more compatible with the other editors. You can copy and paste node trees between them more easily as long as the different nodes you're trying to copy exist in the other editor. All of these different changes come together to make one of the most exciting and progressive updates we've had in a long time. Even though these are great, they are ultimately building towards 5.0, which will bring a ton of new systems to geometry nodes, making it more powerful, and bringing it closer in line to what you can do with even something like Houdini. And that's a future I'm really excited about. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching.